One of these young men spent five months under the ice, 800 miles from the North Pole. What is your name, please? My name is Kent Gehring. My name is Kent Gehring. My name is Kent Gehring. Only one of these young men is the real Kent Gehring. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Pat Carroll, Johnny Carson, and Betty White. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome once again to, to Tell the Truth. Brought to you this week by Dristan Decongestant Tablets. The new three-layer tablet for effective relief from cold miseries, sinus congestion, and pollen allergies. Hi, panel. Hi, bye. Hi, bye. To be back with you all bright and shining tonight. Will you open your envelopes, please, for the first time and remove your affidavits there from? And let's follow along as I read from this first one. I, Kent Gehring, am an Eagle Scout. Last fall, I was selected from among Boy Scouts from all parts of the country to take part in an unusual scientific experiment. I have recently returned from a five-month visit to a unique community. Although it is only four blocks long and three blocks wide, it is heated and powered by atomic energy. Its streets are all tunnels, and it is populated entirely by men. It is the United States Army's Arctic Experimental Station called Camp Century. It is staffed with both Army and civilian scientists and is built under the snow of Greenland's ice cap, just 800 miles from the North Pole. Signed, Kent Gehring. <laughs> to start our show tonight, panel, three stalwart young men, each one claiming to be Kent Gehring, Eagle Scout. And we will begin this first round of questioning tonight with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, Bud. Uh, Mr. Gehring, number three, do you know what permafrost is? Yes, I do. It's, I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's permanently frozen ground. Number two, what temperature does that stay at? What temperature does that stay at? What temperature? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be about minus 40 Fahrenheit. The permafrost, is that cold all the time? Yes, sir. Number one, uh, what is the biggest air base in Greenland? That is Thule Air Base. Uh, number two, uh, number three, excuse me. Where, what bay is that located in? In what bay is that located? At. <laughs> Prepositions of murder. I do not know. You don't know? No. By golly, I don't know why you should. Can you tell me, number three, what those buildings are made of in that uh, Camp Century? They're made of wood. Camp? Mostly. Uh, Pat? Uh, uh, number two, what is the Boy Scout Oath? Boy Scout Oath? You want me to recite it? Please. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times, and to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Good boy. Good boy. I think you did that mighty well. Uh, number three, uh, what is the Eskimo burial service in Greenland, or uh, the uh, process by which they bury the Eskimos in Greenland? I don't know. Number one, do you know? No, I don't. Number two. I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, <clears throat> Johnny Carson, please. Number three, what's the Girl Scout oath? <laughs> Number three, how far under the actual top of the ice are, are you housed? Approximately 30 feet. Were you a scout? I, I shouldn't. I was never a scout. I was. You were a boy scout? No, I was a girl scout. You know what I missed out on? I did a good deed. I helped an old lady across the street, and she didn't want to go. <laughs> that's Num how I met your that's, grandmother. That's how it worked out. <laughs> Number one, uh, how many men were in the, involved in this? Uh... Uh, approximately 120. And uh, you were... Uh, you stayed for how long? For five and a half months. Uh-huh. Number is a great place to hold a party. You never yes, have to send sir. out for ice at all. Uh, uh, <laughs> Stop your own cue. Number three. How are you? Betty what? <laughs> Betty? Number three, uh, for the time that you were there, did you have very much daylight? There was about three months of total darkness. 
And the rest of the time, it was partly, partly light. Uh, number two, uh, when it was light, what time of year was that? Well, that'd be uh, early winter and the late winter. Uh, number one, this was quite an honor to be chosen from all those Boy Scouts, and we're proud of whichever one of you it is. What was the purpose of the experiment? Well, the purpose of the experiment is, of course, to see whether man can survive in Arctic conditions on a year-round basis with uh, an eye in the future toward having a year-round scientific base. Number two, as an Eagle Scout, right, that's can all. you fly? As an Eagle Scout or anything else, we can't do anything but go right now to the compilation of our ballot. So will you kindly, without consultation, panel, mark your ballot and vote for number one, number two, or number three. Team of Challengers, as is our custom, of course, will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Are we all set, panel? Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one, bud. Uh, I think they were all... Thank you. <laughs> Don't welch now if it isn't number one. I, I think they, we didn't get any misinformation from anyone, I didn't feel. And uh, so it was more a matter of demeanor than anything, and just a guess. Mm -hmm. Pat? I voted for number two because he recited the oath so beautifully. Yes. Johnny? I voted for number two because he's got the most hair and he'd be the, the warmest up there. <laughs> and finally, what is your vote, Betty? I voted for number one. <laughs> Let's just hope, shall we? <laughs> well, there we have it. The votes are all in. On my honor, we have done our best to see how well we can come out with the truth in this little situation tonight. As we discover now, which one of these gentlemen is the young man who lived under the ice for such a long time? So will the real Kent Gehring please stand up? <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, I don't know where that comes into scout law, but he sure did it, didn't he? Wow, good job, fellas. Let's find out about the other two. Now, number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Sonny Carr. I'm appearing with the Charles DeForest Trio at J. Lawrence and Larry Storch's Crystal Room here in Manhattan. I'm a drummer. I'm a drummer. And number two, uh, your real name and what you do, please. My name is Lars Hansen. I'm a student at Ridgefield High School in Ridgefield, Connecticut. I have one last question for you, number two. Uh, where in the Scout Oath does it tell you, tell you that you can lie that well? <laughs> you boys did a great job, and in checking the score, you can well know that you'll go out of here with broad smiles in your faces because you fooled the panel completely. That means four incorrect answers at $250 each for a total from Dristan decongestant tablets of $1,000. And of course, the package is wonderful product from the makers of Dristan for you. Good night, young man. We're proud to have had you with us. God bless you. <laughs> and now, panel, let's uh, meet our next team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is Mabel Mary Frances Potter. My name is Mabel Mary Frances Potter. My name is Mabel Mary Frances Potter. My name is Mabel... No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> follow along, panel. Take your eyes down onto the affidavit <laughs> cards and follow along. Yes, sir. I'm Mabel Mary Frances Potter. I'm an exotic dancer. Under the name of Penny Potter, I entertain in cafes and nightclubs. My hobby is raising and showing championship cows. I owned my first cow when I was nine years old and at one time owned a herd of 34. My Guernsey, named Driftwood's Royal Robin, once won the National Grand Championship. To date, my animals have won more than 50 trophies and hundreds of ribbons. Although I still own and show several cows, I sold most of my herd to pay for acting and dancing lessons in New York. Signed, Penny Potter. Panel, you heard these three young ladies claiming to be Penny Potter, exotic dancer. Let's begin this round with Johnny Carson. Johnny? Johnny? Mm -hmm. 
No. I think Johnny. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Son of a gun. Uh, that's about it, yeah. What's, what's the difference between a Guernsey and a Holstein cow? Well, a Guernsey cow is smaller than a Holstein, and it's brown and white, where the Holstein is black and white. And the Guernsey gives much better milk. It's richer in butterfat content. But the Holstein gives more milk. I'm sorry, I asked. <laughs> Number three, how, how did you decide on the name? You're an exotic, exotic dancer, right? Yes. How did you pick out the name Penny Potter? Well... It just went along with, with Potter. Penny went along with Potter, so I thought Penny Potter would be easy to remember. You always have names like that. Mm -hmm. I knew one that was named Kitty Litter. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Betty, if you care to, you may question. <laughs> Thank you, Bug. First of all, I see now why you wore the dress, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, what is uh, Santa Gertrudis? Pardon me. What, what, what would Santa Gertrudis be? <clears throat> I don't know. Number two, what would Santa Gertrudis be? I never heard of that one. Number three? I don't know. Number one, where is the King Ranch? The, pardon me? The King Ranch. I don't know. Number two, what color is an Ayrshire cow? An Ayrshire? They're spotted. They're from England. Little Channel Islands from England. They're used mostly in England. Number three, what color is an Ayrshire cow? Uh, reddish and white. They have long horns. Tom? <clears throat> Thank you. Gosh, what a treacherous group of questioners we've proved to be this, this time. I'd like to ask number three, on which side of the cow a milkmaid sits? <laughs> to milk the cow, of course. Not well, it depends on which end you're looking at it from. <laughs> Pick an end and tell me. <laughs> it's usually the right side. It is. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe you could tell me, number three, how is uh, 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 <laughs> the volume of milk that a cow gives, how is that determined? In what uh, kind of measurement is used to determine the volume of a cow's milk? It's usually in, in pounds when they sell it to the, to the dairy. Thank you. Pat? Uh, number one, uh, what is exotic dancing? Well, exotic dancing is uh, any type of dancing. It can be jazz, it can be ballet, but you have to take something off. Now, whether you take just a glove off or more than a glove, it's still exotic. I that see. may be all you have on. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> number three, what is the proper nomenclature? Uh, in correct terminology, thank you, John Charles Daly, for uh, an exotic dancer. For a stripper, let's say. What did you say? I, yeah. I was kind of confused myself. Let's forget it. Uh, may, may I ask number two, where no, do you keep your house? That's all the time we have in the past year. I'll answer that for you. And it's time once again to vote. So if you will, please, measure the milk and use it to mark your ballot. Please, voting for without consultation... Number one, number two, or number three? They all know better than we do. All right. Okay, Tom, how many, how many quarts? <laughs> how many? <laughs> I voted for, for number two. <laughs> this is one of the few shows where we encourage prompting. <laughs> And I heard somebody say number two. <laughs> and it was better than my reason, so I wrote it down. <laughs> Pat, what number did you vote? I've, I've, again, you know, I've, I had to scribble over. It's a woman's prerogative to change in the middle of the stream. And, and I voted for number three because she was hip. She was hip? She was hip. She had fast, good, bright answers, which would lead me to believe she was theatrical. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, how do you call it? I voted for number three because she mentioned about the... Uh... The pounds and milk, mm -hmm. which I thought, which I know nothing about anyway, so. <laughs> Betty? I voted for number three. Number one had almost too much information. Number two, we didn't question very much. And number three just, um, well, I, I think if well, we should ask them all to dance, and whichever one is the best exotic <laughs> dancer, that's <laughs> 
Well, let's bring that little three-legged stool up to the right side of the animal now and see how well we've milked this here animal as we discover which one of these three charming ladies is the real exotic dancer and owner of champion cows. So, will the real Penny Potter please stand up? <laughs> Well, 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 I tell you, that was uh, sort of a comeback from the first round. You fooled them completely in the first round this time. Well, you got one incorrect one. Let's find out about these other two nice, nice ladies. Number one, your real name and what you really do. My name is Kellyanne Holmes, and I'm an aerialist with Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. Hey! Glad you came down to the ground for our show. Number two, your real name and what you really do. My name is Paula Morris, and I demonstrate health foods on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey. <laughs> Good job. And as I mentioned before, the score doesn't reflect too much fee to take home except our goodwill, but there is one incorrect vote denoting $250 from Tristan, and of course, a package of fine products from the makers of Dristan also. And as I said before, our best wishes go with you. We've enjoyed having you here. Good night, and God bless you all. <laughs> all right, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Henry B. Montague. My name is Henry B. Montague. My name is Henry B. Montague. Follow along once more, if you will, panel, with your copies of this final affidavit. I, Henry B. Montague, work for the largest single business in the world, the United States Post Office. During my many years of service, I have risen through the ranks to my present position. My work involves not only the continued efficiency of the Postal Service, but also the criminal investigation of such crimes as mail robbery, forgery of money orders, embezzlement of post office funds, and the mailing of bombs, poisons, extortion letters, poison pen letters, and other illegal material. In February of this year, I was called to Washington as the Chief Postal Inspector. Signed, Henry B. Montague. Ladies and gentlemen, again, in this time panel, they all claim, as you heard, to be Henry B. Montague, Chief Postal Inspector. We will begin this round of questioning with Betty White. <laughs> Betty? Thank you, Bud. Uh, Mr. Montague, number one, what is the most serious uh, crime in the post office? Uh, armed robbery of uh, anybody who's carrying the mail, a person or truck. That is the most serious yeah. of, of anything that can be done. Uh, number two, what uh, of the things mailed through the mail, what is the most serious penalty, the most serious offense? Uh, well, this blackmail extortion letter is one of the most uh, serious. Number three, what is the penalty for blackmail? Depending upon the extent of the crime. So uh, any, any uh, crime against the postal uh, carrying is a federal offense and is tried in federal court. Number one, where is your office in Washington? On Pennsylvania Avenue between 12th and 13th Street. Uh, number two, who is your direct superior? Postmaster General. And number three, what is his phone? G. Edward Day. Thank Got you. that in. <laughs> Tom Poston, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll ask number three. Can you tell me, suppose a man writes a check for which he has no funds. Is there a punishment for this? Not under the postal authorities. There isn't number two. Do you agree with that? That's right. What if he mails it, number two? If he mails it with intent to defraud, then it's a violation. And what can you do to him? He can go to jail. Are you in trouble, Tom? <laughs> no, but I know some of you will. <laughs> number uh, one, what is the punishment for writing a poison pen letter? Well, that all depends again on the, uh, uh, the character of the letter and uh, what the threat is. A uh, poison pen letter is, in reality, a blackmail letter. And, uh, Pat, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Pat. Uh, number one, what was your first job in the post office? I uh, joined as a, uh, a substitute clerk. I see. Uh, number two, uh, who was the former chief postal inspector? David H. Stevens. Mm -hmm. Number three, uh, what legal term do you use for the prosecution 
under federal law for uh, any of the uh, commitments against? Depends upon what the crime is. Embezzlement, mailing of uh, forbidden uh, material or such as explosives through the mail. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the other designated areas besides the things that are mentioned like bombs and poison? Are there any other important areas, number three? Well, we've mentioned poison pen letters and, and bombs. Uh, mailing of uh, low explosive. That, that's bombs. Oh, mailing of uh, narcotics. Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny, number one, who was the very first postmaster general? That was Benjamin Franklin, but he was postmaster general uh, while these United States were still colonies. Number two, do you agree with that? That's right. Number three, do you agree with that? Yes, and his headquarters was in Philadelphia. Oh. <laughs> Number two, when are you going to get some pens that work in the post office? <laughs> we already have them. We have ballpoint pens now. <laughs> Has there ever been a prosecution for a, a bomb explosion number one again? In the yes, field? some years ago up in uh, the far reaches of Vermont, oddly enough, up in Burlington, uh, we uh, came across a bomb in the mail. The prosecution was there. Uh, the uh, uh, case was tried there. That's it. We never know now whether the bomb exploded before or after it was opened. But right now, let's open up our ballots and get ready to mark them, if you will, please. Without consultation, as always, vote for number one, number two, or number three. Everybody set? Tom, are you? Yes, I am, Bud. Okay. For whom did you vote this time? Well, you see, they're so smart out there, nobody said a word this time. <laughs> So no, they're just as confused. I figure they're just as confused as I am. I voted for number two because I thought... It's nice to know you're not alone. <laughs> Pat, for whom did you vote? I, I voted for number two also because he looked like the type that neither rain nor heat the, nor sleet nor hail would <laughs> stop getting through <laughs> the mail. <laughs> you know it well. <laughs> Johnny. You got some very skillful liars here tonight. <laughs> I'll tell you, I voted for number one. Only because... I'm going to... That's the only That's... reason I'm going is because of Franklin, I guess. All right. And your vote, Betty? I almost switched to number one on that Vermont story because it sounded like it's something that he really believed. But number two, I have to go with it. If he turns out to be a car salesman, I'll never speak to you again. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's see how we make out with our own totalization bit here. And if you're playing along at home with us, as we hope you are each week, check yourself for right or wrong now and have the fun with us as we learn which one of these three gentlemen is the real chief postal inspector. Will the real Henry B. Montague please stand up? Pleasure to have you here, sir. I must say that your two stalwarts on either side of you flanking you are well learned about the various <laughs> facts and figures. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? Uh, my name is Charles Everett. I'm the membership director of the American Institute of Men's and Boys Well. Number three, your real name and what you do. My name is Evan MacArthur, and I'm conductor and musical director of the Harrisburg Symphony and the St. Louis Municipal Opera. <laughs> you all ought to be made honorary postal inspectors. I think you should see what you can do about that when you get back down to Washington. And the score, of course, has been uh, real good for you this time, because there were uh, one, two, three that got you correct, but only one who got an incorrect. So the panel came back real well toward the end there, after a shaky start. That means, of course, only one $250, and that's the total of it from Dristan. But gentlemen, if you had fun, that more than made up to it, because you gave us fun. Good night to you, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Montague has asked that we give his share of the winnings to charity, and it shall be done. Well, panel, that's about all the time we have. It's always a significantly happy evening for me when I'm in your company, and I thank you for that. Aren't you lovely, Bud? Thank you. No, you're lovely. No, he's not. I'm Bud. <laughs> <laughs> good night to you all. Good, good night, night, Bud. Uh, Bud Collier saying good night from Dristan Decongestant Tablets and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Woodson, Bill Codman production.
name in our mailbox is Porter. To our friends, we're Pete and Gladys. And we're at home next on most of these stations. Drop in. To Tell the Truth has been brought to you tonight by Aerowax. Made with natural wax for a shine that mops back naturally. Aerowax. Johnny Olson saying goodnight from To Tell the Truth. The program is pre-recorded.